how prepared were you for what parliamentary life would be like? Being in Canberra is full on. You know, the bells are ringing, there's meetings, there's, there's no time. There was a lot of socialising, the hours were yeah. um, very, very long. Then I started to see, you know, behaviours that I just thought were not workplace appropriate. What are you talking about? Oh, well, there are quite a number of people that uh, don't go home to their own bed on their own. Mm. And I think a bit of that behaviour has changed, but that was certainly very, mm. very common. There's a lot of alcohol. Yep. The extended hours um, where, where people spent a lot of time socialising in different offices was something I wasn't used to right. either. Yeah. And that's where I really found that it was difficult as a, as a female. Right, how? I wasn't often invited in when my male colleagues were having get-togethers for, you know, drinks or cheese or all those sorts of things. And a lot of strategising would get done at those meetings right. and the women who were not invited to it were just never part of, of, mm. of that in those meetings. And that's meetings. really and we just powerful information, right? But to yeah. be in part of that discussion yeah. gives you some power. Yeah. yeah. And then it became, well, actually, I don't want to be sitting in someone's office mm. um, uh, drinking and mm. eating actually said to my husband, I said, look, I just want you to know that I'm not going to do anything while I'm down there that's going to embarrass you. So yeah. it was a deliberate choice by me, mm. well, I'm not going to engage in, in that. I mean, do you think that your progress through the party, I guess, was impeded by the fact that you weren't included in those informal groups? Look, it didn't, it didn't help. Mm. And I think I was, for quite a while, the person who had served the longest in what became an assistant minister's role. I certainly wasn't fast-tracked, but you know what? I slept well at night. <laughs> I slept well at night. Some women have had terrible experiences of, you know, of, of sexual harassment and stuff like that. Have you ever had any kind of off-colour remarks or that sort of thing? I did have one of my... Um, male colleagues who used to breathe on the back of my neck in question time. So what? Yes. Breathe. Breathe. Yeah, I'd just be sitting there minding my own business and I would have the back of my neck breathed on and if I asked a question it would be, that was a great question, thrusting and probing and, you know, oh. that sort of stuff. How nice. Which, ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, that was pretty funny. Well, not really actually. No. But do you know what the issue is? There would mm. be people that would say, can't she take a joke? You know, ah. can she not take a joke? I mean, really? Particularly when it's that funny. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes I do call it out, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes I just go, I, I, can't, I can't be in every fight. I mean, what was that famous interview that you did where you said you had, had a gutful? gutful? You were snotty that day. You were oh, I gross. certainly was. Yes. It was actually the day that that staffer had been... Oh, loving the parliamentary furniture a bit too much. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. And I was just <laughs> beside myself right. that anyone would think that was an OK thing to be doing yeah. at work. I thought I had an mm. absolute gut full. And, and I really had. You know, I, it was just such appalling, you know. Be, mm. I just I couldn't believe it. Yeah, OK. And you were fired I'm up. I'm still a bit fired so up about it now. So you're yeah. disguising it well. Um, mm. So what happens after you get off the radio? Like, does anyone ring you up from the PM's office and say, uh... No one rang do? me. No? No. So I did a few more interviews after that. Yeah. <laughs>